It's been a while since I've done one of my favorite kind of videos to do because it's just me kind of sitting here and dreaming of all the beautiful things that I would like to have in my life. In general, I kind of struggle constantly between my impulses towards minimalism and my desire to have beautiful things in my life. This is a constant theme and sort of reflexive practice that I try and engage in, but at the end of the day, I have a very strong impulse towards curating a beautiful life for myself and what that means to me. The more that I learn about astrology, the more that I think that there are particular aspects in my natal chart that really help explain my attraction to beautiful things. I have no idea why I'm giving this prelude to this video, but all that to say, I've, I'm just obsessed with beautiful things. I love sitting down and thinking about beautiful things that I would like to add to my life, and I'm excited to share these items with you today. In the past I've done a mix of beauty items and lifestyle items, but just for brevity's sake I'm going to stick to just a list of the beauty items that are on the top of my current wish list. So let's get started. The first thing is that I cannot stop thinking about lip products, and I think that this is a manifestation of not wearing a lot of makeup on my face for the last couple of months. I just have found that too much makeup on my face makes me look worse rather than look better. I don't know if this is an age thing, I don't know if this is a medical intuitive change thing, but either way, I've been getting my makeup fix by lusting after lipstick because that's one thing that I feel like if I'm wearing nothing else, if I just have like brows and lipstick and liquid liner, I'm good. The Elizabeth Street Cosmetics in Franklin, which is a deep, very deep, a sort of oxblood red color, burgundy red color. It's carried on Anno Me, Chelsea Ware's shop. And Elizabeth Street is a non-toxic lipstick company and the range is huge. Anno Me only carries some of the bold shades, but that's, I've been wanting that since I saw her wear it in a vlog. Um, I really want the Jeffree Star liquid lipstick in the shade Gemini. I talked about this in my nude lipstick collection video. Not, not eco at all, but it just looks stunning. Bite Beauty Rosewood of the Buttercream Formula is very high on my wish list. And then of the Amuse Bouches, I think Meringue and Pickled Ginger are at the top of my wish list for those. Although, I've mentioned this before as well, I'm trying to restrain myself from buying Amuse Bouches because there's other brands that I want to explore as far as eco lipstick, namely Absolution, which is carried on Beauty Habit, Fit Glow, which my YouTube internet friend Andy from Techno Cupcake raves about, and then Makeup TIA let me know about an eco lipstick company called Kosas that also looks really intriguing. The second thing I'm sort of curious about is the Juice Beauty, what's the full name? Phyto Pigment Illuminating Primer. So as I'm sure you're aware, Juice Beauty has come out with a whole new range of products as part of their Gwyneth Paltrow collaboration. I'm not a Gwyneth fan. I've gotten in like many a discussion with my good friend Elizabeth about this because she is a huge Gwenny Goop fan. It just doesn't do it for me. I have sampled the Phyto Pigment Serum Foundation in Ulta. It reminds me very much of the Gressa Serum Foundation, if you're curious, although I've never tried it on a full face and worn it for a full day, but that was my impression. The Phyto Pigment Illuminating Primer looks to me to be very similar to the liquid version of the Vapor Stratus Instant Skin Perfector Primer. So I, my only experience with that is in the stick form. I've never tried the liquid version, but I've heard that it it's, can be a little bit greasy, so maybe only if you have very, very dry skin. So I, for some reason I'm envisioning the Juice Beauty Illuminating Primer to be similar to the liquid version of the Vapor. I don't know if that's true, but if you've tried it, let me know and if you think that I need it. Okay, number three is that I literally want the entire range from the brand Maya Chia. As soon as I saw a picture of a face oil from this brand, I was like, I need, I need you. You and I vibrate on the same resonance. I first saw Beauty Bar, which is an online boutique that I love shopping with. I saw them post a picture on their Instagram of like one of their face oils. I think they have two face oils in their range. And then they also have a body oil. I think they have an oil face cleanser and they have like a, a multi-purpose balm. I want everything, like literally everything. I don't even know what it is. I just feel very drawn to them. Um, I've also seen lots of love for them in the blogosphere, so I think that the products, are, while being sort of 
just appealing to me on a superficial level, it seems like they're very effective as well. So number four is that for the last probably six months, I've really been lusting a razor by the company We Shave. It's carried on Eco Diva Beauty and they make safety razors as well as traditional five blade razors. And then they also make shaving oil, like kind of luxe shaving oils in two different scents. There's like a Neroli one and a Palo Santo one. And this came about because I was so unsatisfied with the razors I had been using. I have since switched to using just drugstore brand men's razors, which are far and away so much better than women's razors. Please like never buy a women's razor again. They're complete bullshit and men's razors are so much nicer and better. I just feel like the beauty industry dupes women like over and over and over and I'm so sick of it. But anyway, shaving is an area of life that has not been luxified <laughs> yet for me. And so I feel like investing in one of those We Shave razors would just be like totally next level indulgence. Number five is something that I saw the beauty professor talk about in her recent video, and it's by a brand called Vautrevue. Of course, I love that it's French, and they are a company based in France, I think in the south of France. And they do a whole range of makeup and skincare from a more natural perspective. And the thing I want in particular that she talked about is an eyelid primer. It's called the Lingerie Pour Les Yeux, Lingerie for the Eyes. It looks like sort of a dupe for something like a MAC Painterly Paint Pot, or it looks like it might be something similar to my Studio 78 concealer. She gave it a nice review. It kind of ticks all the boxes for me, so it looks like an intriguing product that I would like to try. Number six is I would finally like to get around to procuring the essential oils that came back through my medical intuitive Adam. No, clearly I cannot get through a video without talking about him and my experience because it has just completely changed my life in the last almost four months now. You're just kind of interested in getting your personalized crystal and essential oil recommendations, that's something that he can pull. The three essential oils that came back as particularly therapeutic for me were hyssop, jasmine, and rose otto. He will also give you your ideal ratio of those, and you can put them into a carrier oil and put them in a roller ball or, you know, what have you. So the reason I haven't gotten mine is because jasmine and rose otto are very expensive solo essential oils to buy. Hyssop's very inexpensive. Also was an essential oil I had never heard of. If I were to do these three through Oracasia, it would be like $160 or something. And if I were to go for Young Living or doTERRA, it would be even more. I think that doTERRA's jasmine essential oil is like $200 on its own. So that's really the main reason I haven't procured those, but I really want them. So I might start with the budget option, which is Oracasia even though they come back as a positive resonance through his method um, as being totally fine to use. So yes, that's very, very high on my list to get sometime very soon. Number seven on my list is something that I learned about because my friend Lauren actually sent me a lovely little package that included some of this to try. And it's by a brand I had never heard of. I, this company, it says right here on the bottle, is based in Seattle, Washington. It's called Essential Apothecary, and this is their Hydrate Toner. It can be used on the face and also on the body and on the hair, it says. And it's really amazing. It has a scent profile unlike anything I have tried. I feel like it's very... It, this is, and I told this to Lauren as soon as I tried it, I was like, it reminds me so much of the Skin and Bones body oil. If any of you have ever tried that, that's what this smells like. I tried it years ago on Beauty Habit and it was a little too intense for me at the time, but I think, I don't know, something has changed and I feel very, very drawn to whatever I'm smelling in here. I mean, it's roast geranium, frankincense, sandalwood, and it looks like those are the only essential oils. I think I'm predominantly smelling the frankincense and it smells incredible. So yeah, I think I need a full size of this. I think it's $32, so it's not terribly expensive. And apparently the rest of their skincare is meant to be really nice as well. So it's a nice little sort of boutique apothecary skincare line to alert you to. Number eight came from watching one of Monica Blunder's recent videos. She had a guest celebrity hairstylist on and he did her hair in these like, what looked to be very effortless sort of beachy waves but the amount of effort and zhuzhing that went into creating that look was like kind of intense <laughs> but it, very very pleasurable to watch there's something about watching true professionals hair and makeup professionals 
execute their craft that I find so just like inspiring. It's like watching art. So like Lisa Eldridge, watching her technique is so inspiring to me. And it was similar to watch this guy do Monica Blender's hair. He used a product that subsequently immediately went on to my Sephora loves list. And it's by a brand called Christopher Robin, I think. Is that right? That's what I have written down. But that's making me think of Winnie the Pooh. Anyway, if it's not right, I'll insert an annotation here. But it's a hair volumizer. I think you can use it on damp hair or dry hair, and it's just a volumizing mist. And I, I think that it's relatively natural. I don't think it's as natural as the brands we're probably more familiar with, like your Rock and Rawa and stuff like that. But I think it's kind of a hybrid eco brand. And I have a lot of issues with eco styling products. I don't think they've caught up to conventional styling products. And my hair needs like a lot a lot of help in like every department so I want that. Number nine is that since I have quelled the desire to have the Tom Ford eyeliner pen in my life for a myriad of reasons I did a blog post about this which I'll link you to down below if you're curious to hear my ethos reflections or musings on this topic I decided that I would like to try either the Chantecaille or Rouge Bunny Rouge liquid liner pens I'm on a mission to do a liquid liner comparison video. I've been trying a couple. I've been torn if I want to do a video on just like a single product or if I want to do kind of like a lineup video. The lineup video will obviously take me longer to produce or get out because I'm going to need to try these other products. I'm so hot. It's like really friggin humid and warm in my room right now. Rouge Bunny Rouge and Chantecaille seem to make very lovely looking and sounding liquid liner pens, so I want those in my life. <sighs> Number 10 is totally just, would just be such a splurge. I don't need it in the slightest. I just want it as a beautiful addition to my makeup bag, and it's the Surat Beauty Releve Eyelash Curler. Again, this was something I've seen the beauty professor use over and over, and then recently I saw Lisa Eldridge use it, and she was just like, this thing is amazing, and I was like, oh my god, I need it. I also love that it's called the Releve Eyelash Curler. I used to do ballet, as I'm sure so many of you did too. I feel like everyone was a dancer when they were a kid. I've always been attracted to Surat Beauty just as a brand aesthetic, and I use the Kevin Aquan Eyelash Curler now, but in my head I'm justifying it by saying, oh, I could have the Kevin Aquan in my like travel makeup bag that like, I take to work if I ever need to like recurl my eyelashes at work, which I never do, <laughs> um, but say that I do. Uh, that would be nice and then I could have the Surat here at home. I don't know. I don't need it at all. I just really want it. And then I have an honorable mention that as I was putting this list together I already came up with 10 items. But before I left work the other day I was reading, the New York Times has a column called On Beauty and it's actually really good. And they did an interview with the woman who founded Amora Vixa. I think that's how you pronounce it. Amora Vixa. Amora Vixa. It's a Hungarian skincare brand out of Budapest. They did an interview with this brand founder. I had heard of the brand. They're now carried on Sephora. For like seven years, they were exclusive to Bergdorf's and hard to get a hold of. But now that they're carried on Sephora, they have a little duo pack of the Thermal Cleansing Balm and the Queen of Hungary Mist, which are kind of absurdly expensive, although I feel like my notions of price relative to beauty products has become completely distorted. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't know. I, I mean, it is kind of ridiculous. I think a full size of the Queen of Hungry Mist is like $90 or something. It's like on par with something like Infior. Very, very, um, but not as expensive as something like La Prairie, for example. So I'm kind of like justifying it like that. Yeah, I'd kind of like to try them out. I'll link the article down below too, because that's what sort of sold me on it. Just the quality of the ingredients that they use. The mineral content of the water in the Queen of Hungry Mist is supposed to be very, very high and therefore kind of remineralize your skin and the thermal cleansing balm comes, comes from like medical grade mud or something. I don't even know what that is, but I was sold hook, line and sinker like I am your target audience and you sold me 100%. So I think that's going to do it for the current beauty products that I'm lusting very, very hardcore. I literally will like sit and just like think about what it would be like to have these things in my life. And that honestly, that's part of the fun too. Like I like 
thinking about it and sort of doing pre-manifestation of these things, which then I feel like makes it that much more enjoyable and special when I ultimately do decide to get some of these things. So yeah, I'm like a big beauty product nerd, as you can tell. <laughs> Please do let me know what's at the top of your current wish list. I always love hearing from you guys and you just leave me the best comments. I got the nicest comment ever on one of my last videos and she said, that she had recently discovered my channel and in addition to all the lovely things that she said, she said that she noticed right away how amazing the community of people is that leave comments on my videos and I couldn't agree more, I don't feel like I say that enough, but my channel and the videos that I make have just been one of the most rewarding and gratifying pursuits I've ever undertaken and I just want to take a moment and thank you guys so much for being so incredible and, and supportive of my little endeavor here on the interwebs. So. I would love to chat with you in the comments on this video and all videos. So I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.